Maglai Chief Minister Conrad Sangma and a member of the opposition from Umroy, George B. Lingdor, on Monday got into a heated debate over the MOU signed between Meghalaya and Assam for the first six areas of difference and the second phase of the talks. Raising a question during the question hour on the second day of the autumn session of the Meghalaya Legislative Assembly here on Monday, Lingdor asked why the government has gone ahead with the second phase of border talks without taking the stake holders on board, to which the CM replied that the discussion is a process and as it moves on, all stakeholders will be invited and consulted and public hearings will be held. So the discussion is a process. Uh, it's not an event of a single day. So therefore the process has started. And as the process moves on, we will include, discuss, uh, we will invite stakeholders, we will have uh, public hearings. We'll have multiple meetings. So therefore, so the process has started. It's not that we have concluded the discussion. Hence, as this process moves forward, all stakeholders, all different people, public in general, all of them will be consulted and only then we will move ahead with the discussion. The talks got a little heated up after the chief minister accused the Umroy MLA of misleading the House and termed his remarks that the recent border pact was signed without consulting the stakeholders from the HEMAS a lie, to which Lingdor replied that it is up to the people to judge whether he is a liar and asked why the chief minister was annoyed when the question was raised. Sir, it's uh, sad that the honourable member is misleading the House completely. And uh, I can completely say that it's a lie, what he's saying, sir. In fact, uh, the process of the first phase saw multiple stakeholder meetings. For the first time, the ministers and the concerned officials went to ground zero, had multiple public hearings which are on record, not only with just Meghalaya, but even Assam was with us. So, sir, I would ask the honorable member to refrain for making such statements which are completely misleading. You're in the House. This is not a press conference that is going on. So be clear about your facts. This is not the way a responsible member should act, sir. The rules and procedures of conduct of this House tells us that we cannot cast personal aspersions on honorable members. It is expected that the leader of the House refrains from using the word lies and tells the members that we are lying. Sir, I'm talking and some members are trying to add fire to this, add fuel to this entire discussion. Sir, the Khasiel District Autonomous Council had only passed a resolution in the House opposing the MOU. We have letters from Hima Malim opposing the MOU. We have people who are up in arms saying that they don't want to go to Assam. Sir, calling me a liar, it's okay. It's for the people to judge whether I lie or not. I don't want to diverge or diverge, uh, go away from the reply that the Honorable Shimata has said. That the government will still be considering the stakeholders. It will still be thinking. So when we are sir, moving question, into, into this, sir, interrupting a normal member also is not part of the rule, sir. So therefore, sir. So this is question hour, sir. My sir, point is that. I think we not be reminded of what is question hour and zero hour. You need to be policy. reminded. That's so why is the honorable chief minister annoyed? Why is the chief minister annoyed? The chief minister urged the members not to politicise the issue like the border disputes and said that this is a long pending issue that no government in the past had dared to touch. He further clarified that a complicated subject like this could not have every single person agreeing to every decision made by the government, hence the letters of discontentment and objections from several quarters, but maintained that public meetings and discussions were held. Sir, I think the honourable member needs to again do his homework, he has to understand that not agreeing to a discussion and giving a letter of you know, uh, discontentment does not mean discussion didn't take place. Because discussion took place… If the discussion, discussion place, had been there, why would there be discontentment? Please, please. <clears throat> Sir, 
when we talk, is it always necessary that everything will go on as we agree or, or both all agree? It may not go. But does that mean we never talked? So for him to jump to a conclusion that because there was discontentment, we didn't talk, that is where I'm saying he's misleading the house. Your point may be valid, that somebody was not contented or not happy with the MOU and they have a right to write to it. But does that mean or does that you know, imply that discussion didn't play, take place? So that does sir, mean, I'm replying, that means sir, that there is a neutral discussion was not necessary at all. Sir, I'm replying. That means this discussion was not necessary at all, sir. Then you just go ahead and decide no, and take, give away the areas. Sir, now, now Honorable Member is exactly saying what he said should not be done. Sir, we have maintained that we discuss with everybody. That's how discussions... Sir, a complicated subject like that cannot be moved forward without this detailed discussion. That's number one. And that's why we did it. And what I'm saying is that the Honourable Member saying that we didn't discuss is misleading the House and that's incorrect, sir. Now, I'm not saying that everybody agreed to it, so discontentment may be there. And that's what the uh, KGDC or the other uh, Himas might have written. That's fine. But saying that we didn't consult them is the part that I'm saying that you're misleading. We did consult them. They, just, they did not agree to it. That's a different issue. We may talk and argue for 100 years and we may not disagree. We may not agree, sorry. But that's how things go, discussion happens. But I'm saying, sir, that the, the discussion took place. All the stakeholders were consulted. Many, many rounds of discussion took place. And similarly, even in this second phase also, which is, again, a very, very complicated area, we will again have discussions with the stakeholders. And again, we might not have everybody agreeing to everything. Lingdor later stated that the process needs to be reviewed because all the anomalies that happened in phase one of the talks should not be repeated in phase two and reiterated that the stakeholders should be consulted before going ahead with the second phase. As the Honourable Chief Minister stated, needs to be reviewed because all the anomalies that had happened in phase one, sir, we don't want that to happen in phase two, sir. Reacting to this, the Chief Minister replied in the affirmative. It's very easy to say, oh, we have left that village out. Let's be specific. Please don't give generic statements, is my request, sir, through you, that if the honorable members, when they say villages were left out, please mention which village, you know. There were differences in the area. Please, which area of the difference was there? It's a large area, sir, with many, many villages and large population. If we give generic statements here in this house, then we'll keep going round and round and round in discussion, and we will not reach to any conclusion. But yes, if there are areas that will help us, or there are suggestions that will help us to make the things better and resolve the situation in a much better manner for the people. So we are ready. We're ready to listen. But not if it is being done from the point of playing politics. So therefore, I'm not saying that people will play politics. But if you are making statements which are generic, like somebody will come in, I mean, honorable member just mentioned, sir, that villages were left out, you know, and people are in arms. Let us hear the names of the villages where people are up in arms. What is the problem out there? Let's discuss that and let's figure out how to resolve that issue.